Right, okay guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at an absolute epic thrash metal song by German, German pioneers creator. Uh, I did a cover of this song not, while, uh, not too long ago, so you can check it out on the link. It's just going to come up now. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my page. I've been putting a lot of content lately and getting some great feedback from everyone. So I'm very, very pleased. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. Um, so. Uh, today we've been going to do the Hordes of Chaos. So for those of you who are not familiar with Creator, Creator are one of those big thrash metal, European thrash metal bands. They were the answer to American thrash metal in the 80s, um, you know, along with Sodom and uh, Tankard. Uh, they were really, and Destruction, they were really sort of the sort of avant-garde of sort of thrash, German, th European thrash metal. Uh, huge in the 80s and in the, until the mid-90s. Around the mid-90s, um, they sort of, their sign sort of changed a little bit, so their popularity dipped quite massively. Uh, even though they had a few good albums, I mean, I'll be honest, I sort of stopped following them a little bit at that period because it just wasn't really, they went for a slightly more industrial sound, which wasn't my cup, my cup of tea, really. Um, but then in 2001, if I'm correct, they came back with the album Violent Revolution. They added Sammy uh, from Finland, a great guitarist, uh, which brought in this element of thrash with a slightly more melodic approach. And in fairness, since then, creators just gone up like this. And at the moment, I would say probably one of the biggest bands in Europe uh, in the frame of in this in, in metal. And they do transcend a lot the sort of thrash metal crowd of early days. Nowadays, they seem to have a much, much, much broader appeal uh, and frequently headlining festivals. Um, so Hordes of Chaos is from, I think if I'm correct, their 2010 album named of the same. So Hordes of Chaos. Uh, it's a great live track. They tend to open a lot of shows with that song and the crowd just goes mad at that point, and rightly so, because it is that kind of a driving epic kind of song. Uh, I'm going to split the video in two parts because I realize there's actually a lot of riffs to get through. There's a lot of guitars doing two different things and there's a really pretty long intro. So just the intro alone is going to take a little while to get through. So I, I'm, I am going to split this video up. So I will, shall be posting the next video next week. Uh, tuning wise, we're in standard D. So we're standing, everything's tuned down as a full step. So we're in a slightly sort of death metal kind of tuning. Um, and that's it. I mean, nothing really much uh, too difficult to play. It's it's challenging just on the fact that you've got to keep up keep up with the song. It's a long song. The lot of fast tremolo pickings. If you're not used to tremolo picking, I suggest you sort of warm yourself up or sort of work towards your tremolo picking. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So without much further ado, let's delve into hordes of chaos. Right, guys. So um, let's have a look first at the uh, the intro. Uh, if those of you are not haven't seen the video, I urge you to watch the video of uh, this this uh, this song. Uh, it's rather funny. Uh, it's basically Conan the Barbarian meets Man of War in a thrash metal context, uh, with some very homoerotic kind of kind of you know you know uh, subliminal messages. I think in there. I think. But anyway, it's really funny. Just watch it. It just. It, 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 I, I've always found that video hilarious. But anyway, I mean, metal is sort of sometimes meant to be tongue in cheek, and I think Creator are pretty good at that as well. So, anyway, with, like I said, so the first guitar kicks in. There's a couple of unusual things in it. So, let's play it and I'll break it down for you. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's break down this riff. Like I said, there's a couple of unusual things, as you'll realize there are some major intervals uh, within this riff, which is unusual for thrash metal. It's meant to sound like evil, but actually in the context of this, it works because it sounds very epic, which is, I think, the effect that they wanted to get, and it works, because as I said, live, this song works a treat. So let's break it down. So, we, so like I said, we're in D, but we're gonna talk everything as if we're in concert pitch. So we're gonna start on the ninth fret of G and head down straight to the 10th fret of uh, A. All right, so already we've got an unusual sort of major sixth interval here. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go 9th fret of G into the 10th fret of A. Then we're gonna go 7, 9 on the D and then land on the 7th fret of A. Then we're gonna repeat these top three notes. So 9th of G, we're gonna go 9th of G, 12th, 9th of D, and then 10th of uh, A. Right, this is when the major interval will come in. So let me show you that bit. Right, so we're gonna start on the 11th of G. So, 
Right, so we're gonna go 11th of G. Then we're gonna go 12, 12th of D. And we're gonna go 12th of G. Then 12th, uh, sorry, 12th, so twice on the 12th of D and then once on the 14th of G. So. Right, and we're galloping on that first 12th fret of D. And then we come back, finish off this riff on the 11th of, uh, 11th of G. So we gallop on the first 12th fret of D, and then after that we just basically pedal twice on the 12th fret of D to go up to the nose. So that's basically it. So when I did say it sounded a bit majory, there you go. You can hear, you can, you, you can hear it, okay? So we're going to play this, uh, and then we're going to repeat that bit, but we're going to change the tail a little bit. So... So this time around on the second tail, we're going to go on the 11th of G and then we're going to gallop on the 12th fret of D, 12th fret of G, 11th, back to the 12th fret of D for two hits and then back on the 11th of G and then play the 11th, 12th fret of D and the 11th of G again one more time. So we're not going up to the 14th, okay? It's fairly self-obvious when you actually hear it that that's what the move does, okay? Right, now like I said, this intro is fairly long. Uh, to teach because there's actually two guitars that sort of kick in. So what I'll do now is show you the second guitar, uh, the lower guitar that comes in after a few, after a couple of repeats, I think. And this is Miller Petrosa's guitar. So this is Miller, the leader of the band, vocalist, guitarist that comes in with a slightly lower, with a basically a, a guitar a full uh, octave down. All right. So let's break it. Let's play it, and we'll break it down. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's have a look at Miller's guitar. It's exactly the same thing that we played up the octave for, for, from, for Sammy's guitar. Miller's repeating that down an octave. So we're starting on the second fret of D. Actually, let me show you. So we're going second fret of a, D, third fret of A, D, sorry, open A, and then we go open A to the second fret of A. So. Then we play an open E, then we're gonna descend from the second fret of D, second fret of A, into the third fret of E. And then we're gonna do that sort of major interval, D major interval up there. So D major sort of arpeggio. Right, so we're doing fourth fret of D, gallop on the fifth fret, fifth fret of D, and then, so fifth, again, two, two hits on the fifth fret of A, into the seventh fret of D, and then back onto five, five on the A, A to the fourth of D, okay? And then the second time we do the same thing. Just like in the other guitar, instead of going up to the seventh of D, we're gonna play a fifth of A, sorry, a fourth of D. Then we're gonna go, we're gonna fifth of D, two hits on the fifth of A, one hit on the fourth of E, and then again one hit, five, five, five on the A, and then four on the, on the D. And that's how the sort of first part of the, you know, the intro with the two guitars coming in finish. Right, there is now a third guitar. Uh, now, the Germans, German bands are generally quite known to layer a lot of harmonies. And uh, there's a very funny video actually where you watch Creator recording uh, one of their albums. It might be actually this one. Uh, up in Sweden with uh, the great producer Jens Borgen who's done loads of albums. And Jens, Jens calls himself the uh, Cheese Police because especially with German bands, because German bands are very famous for making a lot of, lot of harmonies because they tend to like their power metal, the very melodic stuff. But the problem is with a lot of harmonies, you can easily start sounding very, very, very cheesy, very quickly. So, you, you know, Rienz acts as a bit of a sort of a cheese police in order to avoid German bands sounding too cheesy. So it's actually quite funny, again, self-deprecating, self but yes. Uh, and as a, as, a, as a composer myself of writing death metal and my sort of more melodic side of death metal, I am also a little bit, I have a tendency to do that. I am a sucker for big harmony melodies and all that. But sometimes you just have to control yourself a little bit. Okay, so that's just more of a, you know, sort of an anecdote regarding sort of, you know, writing your own music. Anyway, so let's have a look at the guitar that comes in on top uh, and then we'll break it down after that. <laughs> Right, okay, so uh, let's have a look at how this sort of uh, upper harmony actually functions. Okay, so we're up here at the top. Uh, I'm gonna switch to my neck pickup, and it's, uh, sorry for the intonation, there's a couple of intonation issues with this guitar, I should get fixed soon. We're gonna start on the 12th fret of E, and we're gonna go 12th of E, then 12th of G, 14th of G, 12th of B. Then we're gonna hit the 14th of D, then we're gonna go 12th of E, 
12th of E, 12th of B, and then 12th of G. So we're going down on the E minor arpeggio. All right, then we're gonna enter that sort of, uh, when the synths come marching in bit. So we're on the 14th of E, 15th of B, 15th of E, 15th of e, B, 17th of uh, E, 15th is 15th again, and 15th of E, and then 14th of E, and then you guess it, we're gonna go. We're gonna do the same thing again, but it's time to finish off on the 14th of E twice, okay? And that basically is what I would call the first part of the intro, done. So you've got like the two guitars coming in, then you've got the second guitar coming in on top, sort of, you know, adding in a, a, a layer of, it's not even actually a harmony in this case, because we're actually playing three different octaves. So we're playing the same riff in, different, in three different octaves over the guitar. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the next little part of the intro, which is sort of leady part that Sammy introduces just before the song cut, cut goes into the sort of first, effectively first riff. All right, okay, so let's play that down, play it, play it, I'll keep stay in my neck pickup and we'll play it and then we'll break it down. Okay, all right, so let's have a look at this a little bit. So this is a little melodically or lick. We're starting on the 12th fret of E, then we're going 13, 14 on the G, then we go 12, 15 on the B, then with 12, 15 on the B, so. Then we go 13, 14 again on the G, and then 12, 13 on the B, so. Then we're gonna go down to the 11th of G, and then 12, 10, 12 on the B. Then we're gonna go on the, stay on the 10th of B, we're gonna do a quick hammer pull off uh, in triplets on the 10, 12, 10 on the B. And then we're gonna go 12, 11 on the G. So we play that first bit. Okay, right, then we're gonna repeat this little part a second time. And what we're gonna do on this one, we're gonna basically go 12 again, so start the same way, 12 on the E. 13, 14 on the B, 12, 15 on the, on the sorry, 12, 13, 14 on the G, 12, 15 on the B, 13, 14 on the, on the G again, 12, 13 on the B, 11, 12 on the G, then 10, 12 on the B, B. then 10, 10, 12, 10 again on the, on the, uh, on, on the B, and then 12 of G, and then finish this time on the 10th of E. So it's twice the same thing, we're just changing the last note. Okay, all right. Now, at this point, we do have uh, Miller's guitar. Instead of playing sort of uh, uh, the same thing underneath, he actually added some chords to sort of punch up the sort of, the, the, the sort of riff here. So let's have a look at those chords underneath. All right, okay, so it's just a series of power chords that Miller's playing underneath, an E power chord from the seventh fret of A. Oops, sorry. From the seventh fret. Then we're going up to the eighth fret, to the F. Then to the C on the third fret. Then to the seventh, back to the, back to the seventh. Then we're going to a G sharp on the fourth fret of E. And then fifth of E to the A power chord. Then we repeat that. Seventh of E, eighth of E, uh, eighth of A, sorry. Then third of A, back to the seventh. Then again G sharp on the fourth fret of E, and then fifth of uh, fifth of uh, e, uh, a, e, sorry, and then we stop on that fifth, fifth of A. That's how we actually end to bring in the next riff, which is the sort of kick into the the big riff. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna have a look at uh, the first big riff of the song, uh, you know, the sort of down pick riff. So let me play it to you slowly, and then we'll break it down. Now this riff requires quite a lot of work guys because it's all down pick. You want to try to make it as tight and tight and tight as possible as you can. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for you very slowly uh, as to what's actually happening. And then, uh, then I would suggest you try to practice it very, very slowly when you, you're attempting this riff. All right. Okay. So we're going to be, be, begin on the opening and with a gallop. So down, up, down, a reverse gallop. Then we're going to go straight to the seventh of A, then back to the E. Then back to the 7th of A, back to the E, 
Back to the seventh of A. Back to the open E. Back to the again seventh of E. A, e again seventh of E again. Open E then seven. Then we this time round on the seven. So we're gonna go. Seven. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go seven six seven on the A. Nine eight on the D. Right? Okay. Then we're gonna go straight back to the open E and play again open E to the seven. And then at this point, we're going to go 7, 6, then 9, 7 on the E. So 7, 6 on the A. Okay, and then 9, 7 on the E. Now we're going to repeat the start. So we're going to gallop on the open E. So that whole first part is the same. Then we're going to go again to the E open E. So we're going to change, tell the riff this time around with this little melody. So the melody is going to be 7, 6 on the A, then 7, 9 on the A. Then we're going to go up to the 7th, 6th of D, then back to the 9th of A, 7 on the A, and then finish on the 9th of A. Okay? Now, slow the riff down, yeah, and feel the whole thing. Again, I'm going to play to you very slowly so you get the whole feel. Okay, now one little thing just to just to give you a little idea. When you listen to it, it took me a little while to figure this out. Um, it's it's a bit tricky. The actual first note, the seventh seventh of A, happens on beat number two. So you've got to be really careful to really go. Okay, there is an actual little stop on that third opening on the gallop. So you're going down, up, down, and you're actually hitting a quaver on that third. So you're going one E and uh, and then two. You start there. So one E and a two. Okay, one and a two. Okay, and listen to the drums very carefully. Ventor actually goes doo -doo -doo, duh, and then that start. So just be careful that it takes a little bit of time to getting used to it. There's a tendency when you're playing this kind of stuff fast to just go into it very quickly without realizing there is an actual stop on that opening. All right, and that's for basically the sort of first real thrash riff uh, of this song. Uh, I was going to now introduce you the vocal riff, uh, and then uh, one more riff after that, a couple of more riffs after that, and probably take a break there and do the second video. Uh, after that, we'll see how we get on with time. All right, okay, let's play you the verse riff and then we'll break that down for you. All right, okay, these kind of riffs are so difficult to play a little bit slower because it's a real thing about when you play these fast riffs, you just feel them a lot better. But slow it actually makes you, you have to think a lot more about how you're going through them. So let's have a quick look at This is what I would call a typical thrash riff and even more typical creator kind of riff. This is the kind of riff that Miller has on so many songs when it comes to his vocals. He tries to keep those riffs a bit simpler because he's actually doing vocals at the same time. So those ten riffs tend to be a lot simpler and just so that he can sort of pummel his vocals today. And he normally has a lot of lyrics to deliver as well. So let's have a quick look at how the riff is going. So we're starting on the second fret now. I tend to actually use a little power chord at the start on the second fret of A, so like a B power chord. And then from here, we're gonna tremolo pick six times on the, on the second fret of A. Then we're gonna go to pull off on the five. Then we're gonna stay there. So. And we're going to do the same thing, pull off from the third. So you're going to tremolo pick. And then from here, we're going to go to the fifth fret, uh, sorry, third fret, of, third fret of E as a power chord. And then we finish on the B flat, first fret of, first fret, first fret of A. So we're going. Right, then we're going to repeat this again. Start again on the power chord. And then this time, play both the pull-offs on the five and then the three. So five, two, then three, two. And then this time, we're going to tremolo pick from the third fret of E, then to the second fret of A, so major again. Then we're going to go to the second, so third, third, third fret of E, second fret of A, second fret of E, third, first fret of A. So. Okay, we're going to tremolo pick that for an entire bar. All right? Okay, so that pretty much is the vocal riff. Now, what happens the second time, we repeat all of those tremolo pick parts. Uh, and then the, we're going to play those. The second time, we repeat the same things again. So. 
Now, instead of tremolo picking the last bit, this time we're gonna play them as chords. Okay, and that sort of leads us onto the sort of, uh, the little bridge riff that comes in after though you've got two guitars playing two different parts. So what I'll do is I'll play you the sort of lower part first. All right, so very simple here. Miller's guitar is going a power chord on the E flat. Then it's just tremolo picking for four and then down back to the, to the E flat power chord. Okay, and then the top guitar, I'll show you as well. So I'll play, I'll, I'll play it to you straight away. All right, so what's happening with Sammy's guitar? We're on the 8th fret of G, then we tremolo pick on the 8th fret of G, and then we jump up to the 12th fret of G. Then we stay on the 12th fret of G, tremolo pick there, go to the 15th of G, and then we go 12, 14 on the B. Okay, right, uh, this video is just going on and on because there's so many different parts. So I'm gonna squeeze in another couple of, uh, couple of riffs, and then we're gonna call, stop there at that point because I think this video is just gonna get too long. We'll cover the rest of the song in the second part. Right, so after, at this point you'll be going into a sort of another sort of thrash, typical thrash riff. Let's play you that riff very slowly and then we'll break it down. This is another little thrash riff. Let's actually bre break it down from here. We're gonna start on the seventh fret of e, a, 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 then treble a pick on the second fret of E, then we're gonna go to the fifth fret of A, then back to the second fret of E, back to the, this time the third fret of A, then to the second fret of E, then we're gonna two three on the A, then we're gonna go open A, then two three on the A. And then fifth, five on the eight. So let's just look at that slowly. Right, the second time, so you saw I played the same thing twice with a little mistake there, but anyway. At the second time, instead of going straight back into the riff, we're gonna tremolo pick a little melody, starting on the third fret of third fret of E. So I'm just playing you a single note so you hear it. Okay, now remember what I've told you about this. Listen to how the melody goes and then add your terminal picking. So it goes. So you can hear how the melody is going. So then you tremolo pick that. Okay, so. Right, then we're back to that riff again. And then tremolo pick again. Now this time round, the melody is going. We're going. We finishing off on the fifth of D. So we're going three, five, three, two, eight, seven, five, six, and we stop there because that leads us onto the chorus, right? Okay. So let me play that riff again. Play the whole riff very slowly. Okay, and this now will be the final riff for this first lesson on Hordes of Chaos. This is the chorus riff. Let me play it to you and then we'll break it down. All right, okay, so this is probably the simplest riff of, the, of, of them all, so let's have a quick look at it. All right, so we're starting, remember we finished on the fifth fret of D, we're gonna start now on the sixth fret of E. So we're gonna straight down from there. We gotta go, so this is where the moment he says hordes of chaos. So this he starts from the sixth fret of E, which is a B flat, and into the, into the D. So we're playing this into the major third. So into an open E power chord. And we're gonna gallop twice. Yeah, or three times actually. Then we're gonna reverse this going five on the A and back on the six. So we're going reverse reverse the two power chords. And then a tremolo pick. 
Right, so we're gonna go. So we're gonna gallop a bit longer the second time. Then this time round, instead of going to a B flat power chord, we're gonna actually play a B flat power chord, but as a minor, major third power chord. So get that sound. And we're gonna gallop twice. Then we're gonna go to the third fret of A power chord. Yeah, we're gonna gallop once. Then we're gonna go six, six three. Yeah, so the whole riff. So. Okay, and that basically is the first half of Hordes of Chaos. A fairly long video, I agree, I, uh, I appreciate. Uh, but hopefully it won't, uh, you'll, you start working on this and then by the time I do drop the next lesson, you'll have got some of those parts down. Until then, see you next time and have a good time with Hordes of Chaos. <laughs>